Hey and welcome to Sekiro the Ultimate Guide. Now if this is your first time watching any of these videos then I'd ask for a minute or so of your time just so I can explain how to use this guide and what it's about. Essentially this guide is entirely complete and it will help you get a full platinum for Sekiro. It covers all NPC quests that are relevant, all items, a best path through the game and also specifically strategies to get you through the game with the path of least resistance. Remember that this guide is supposed to be used as a full guide but you, could, you can use it for specific areas if you need to but if you're confused about how you know we are at a certain point or doing a certain thing, chances are the answer is in a previous episode. When it comes to boss battles, we really only show you the easiest method that we could find based on our perspective. If you want to fight the boss differently, it's up to you in this case to find a different and harder strategy. Now, if you have a good tip or have a question, leave them in the comments and I'll add them to a pinned post. That way this guide can constantly get better or more efficient. So if you have a question, check the pinned post first. If you do have a tip, please leave a timestamp so I can find the bit that you're talking about. Also, please bear in mind that this guide is taking me literally hundreds of hours to make, so if you enjoyed the video, the least you could do is give it a like. If you really enjoyed it, perhaps give us a sub! And if you really, really enjoyed it, you can support the channel on our Patreon if you're feeling generous, or perhaps sub to us on our Twitch, that's another good option. Now on to the guide. Alright guys, here we are, final part of the Sekiro Ultimate Guide, and today this whole part is dedicated to Ishii and Ashina. Now, if you've just came here without watching the rest of this guide, because you just need like a, an actual foolproof method to defeat an Ishii, well, we've got you covered. However, something I do need to say is that on some level, you do need to get at least a little bit okay at the game in order to do it. But if I'm able to do it, I think you should be able to do it too. Now, yeah, there is a big crutch, and it is the axe, but it's just useful that the axe can do so much to Ishin. but there is still, like, a phase or two where the axe isn't particularly effective. Essentially, we want to be able to do phase one and two without using any emblems, and that's where you just need to get good enough at the game in order to do that. That is just straight up required. There is no other method of being able to cheese it, Ashina. And it sucks, I guess. But, no. at the very, but at the very least, it's the end boss of if, Sekiro. What do you expect? If you can't do phase one and two, you're not going to beat the boss yeah, anyway. Yeah, that's actually a fair point. Like, if you can't do at least that, then it, no amount of cheese will help you. So there's four the phases last. to this boss. And essentially, you don't want to use any more than two or three heals on any one phase. Now, ideally, you want to be able to do this phase, which is essentially just Genichiro. You want to be able to do this without using any heals. So that also means that, like, instead of healing, uh, just take the loss, like, just die. Because then when you kill him, you'll get your revive back. So just, you have to get good enough to defeat Genichiro without healing. So, some pointers. You want to be on his ass. You want to be massively aggressive. And... Sadly, one of the issues is, is just getting good enough at him and good enough at deflecting his attacks and reading his attacks in order to do that. Now, the thing is, is by this point in the game, it should be easy enough. And the fact that you can just go straight to fighting him over and over again, like super quickly, you should be able to learn him. Now, there's some more footage coming up later on of another go at the boss, so don't worry, we'll go back to that. But now, we're doing the first phase of Ishin. Now, there is a specific technique to baiting out a certain attack and lowering how difficult Ishin is going to be. So this three hit combo that you just saw there, that is the attack that you want to be baiting out. And then you want to be trying to loop Whirlwind Slash over and over again. Now, this is far, far easier on PS4 for some reason. I don't know why the, PS, the, the PC was so much more difficult. I found PC was significantly easier because it was like the timing of 60 versus 30 FPS. It, so again, this is the attack that you want to bait out and as soon as he does the three hit combo, you want to do a charged R1, he will block it and that allows you to then dodge to the left a couple of times and then use Whirlwind Slash behind him. And you just want to be trying to bait that out over and over again and just try and avoid like all his other attack strings, maybe get a hit in here and there if you're feeling confident enough. Now the thing is, is he's not particularly aggressive which is the benefit of this phase one. It allows you to take it slowly, it allows you to bait out the attacks in your own time. Now, unlike other bosses, you can't just fire through phase one. And 
If you wanted to fire through phase one and just use the axe, you could do that. But the other two phases are significantly harder than phase one. And you want to use the axe on them to minimize the heartache that they're going to give you. So, some things to work, like look out for, I suppose, as we'll discuss them as they come up. I'll kind of point them out, each thing, as it happens. So, you can just, uh, you can, again, jump on his, uh, his head there, but again, it's this particular three-hit combo that you're looking to bait out. His other attack strings are kind of irrelevant. And you don't want to really get caught up in any one particular combo because he does hit pretty hard. Not quite as hard as Owl, but he's got a lot more attacks. You're not really you're not really trying to um like deflect kill him. You're trying to just straight up kill him in this phase. Um I guess you should probably like I'm noticing it in this fight and you're not doing it, is that when your posture's getting really high, it resets quicker if you hold block. Which is the opposite of what Dark Souls has taught you all this time if you're playing yeah. that. So, if you see that your posture is getting really full, back up a little bit and then just hold block and it will reset much quicker than, is a, than if you're walking around without holding L1. Now, if he takes a step back and puts his sword in his sheath, that gives you the ability to do the jump on, like right there. You can do the jump on his head and then like do the double hit as you come down. Um, that's a good way of getting in some damage. Or if you're now. using Ichimonji instead of Whirlwind Strike, that's an ideal point for like a dropping Ichimonji on his face. Oh, for sure. For massive posture damage. However, now we're getting on to phase two, and phase two is the phase where we just want to straight up get it out of the way, get rid of. So Ungo Sugar, Akko Sugar, and go to fucking town using the axe. Now, I would recommend not using the Ceremonial Tanto for this fight because it takes you down like a full heal, and you want to have as many heals and as much chance as possible. Now, when uh, fighting Ishin in this stage, you can see his posture is going to go down quite quickly. You want to be aggressive and stay on his ass with the axe. If you get him on fire with it, even better, because whilst he's on fire, his posture will decrease. So that's good. Now, you can also take the time to heal. Don't get, like, too greedy. And I got, like, quite lucky there. But, um, as you can see, once you get his posture past a certain point, which should mean that his health is past a certain point, maybe, like, a third, come up for halfway, his posture will stop going down quite as fast. You still stay on his ass, and you keep axing him. That's it. Phase 3 out the way. On to Phase 4. Phase 4 is much like we're uh, fighting Owl. Uh, we are going to be using Mortal Draw for this. And we're baiting out this jump attack right there. Now, you can get a few hits in with whatever emblems you have left with the axe. <clears throat> and also, if you're able to do it, time a uh, lightning uh, counter. That, like, what ha happened just there. Now, I'm not particularly good at lightning counters. That was just luck. If you can do Stage 2... Like without using the fang and blade like the axe technique if you can do stage two stage three is even easier Yeah, because you have the lightning reversal if you can do that and stage two then stage like uh, sorry stage four Yeah, isn't even a thing. Like, yeah, this is true. Ishin gives you a way to make the stage you just beat even easier so his uh, jumping overhead lunge attack is the one that you're trying to get now uh, I, th I think I did do the lightning reversal. You but did, but it, it missed. missed him. Yeah. Yeah, I think he hopped back too far, and you missed. <clears throat> so you should do the lunge, and then you dodge in into the right, and then you use the mortal draw, and you, that's the thing. That is like the loop for this uh, particular one. You get hit by it. <clears throat> I don't know why I'm so bad at the lightning. You just be a tight. You're just not leaving a big enough delay, probably. Possibly. But as you can see, like, this isn't proven too much of a threat. His attacks are all fairly slow and big, big and sweepy, but he does do a lot of damage, as you can see there. Now, this is why I say that all the healing items, all the, like, you know, the big instant one healer, like, uses, like, the Kuro's Rice Ball and stuff, this is the fight that you want to be saving it for. Because you, you're able to take them, like, super quickly, um, and they'll just max out your health immediately and give you, like, a bunch of health regen and other, like, other buffs. Yep, Persimmon gives you health regen, uh, Rice does, Rice Ball, um, there's a load of other ones, but remember as well that you can just pause the game, so if your sugars are worn off, you can pause the game and apply Ungos and uh, stuff like that all over again. Also taking a Jesus statue if you've ran out of um, revives is another yep. one. Like, uh, uh, that's, this is what they're used for, like this is the fight that you want to be using Jesus statues on. You can also use uh, plenty of pellets here as well. 
Now, for some reason, I didn't take like a Kuro's Rice Ball or whatever. I don't know why I didn't just eat one. Um, Divine Grass as well. There's another one. But there you go. That is Ishii Nashina. Now, again... I wonder how good the shield is against Ishii. Yeah, actually. I think that could be pretty good against him. Theoretically. For stages three and four? Maybe. Now, you can try that if you want. But again, you know, you've seen the technique that absolutely works. So again, uh, we are going to show you another fight, just so you've got like, you know, double the footage to go on. You can see things are replicatable. You can, you know, see one footage and compare it to the other and see if you're able to kind of do it as well. Now, if I'm able to do this, I feel that you, sh you guys should be able to do this. And just to make a point, you will, like, you, you will have a hard time with this boss the first time you go in. He is difficult. Oh, he's way harder than any other humanoid fight you've came up against, other than maybe the Evil, the yeah. second Evil fight. But other than that, yeah, he's significantly harder than any other boss you've came up against that's just a man with a sword anyway. He's... <clears throat> seven Spears doesn't hold even yeah. fucking anywhere near to him. I really don't like saying, like, oh, you know, just get good, or, you know, you, you, you have to learn him, but honestly, just part of beating this guy is you have to learn him. Now he gives you like a cool technique that you can use for your NG plus playthroughs, as well as you get more uh, like attack power. And that's what the mask fragment is used for as well. When you go into NG plus, it allows you to just sink all your skill points and attack buffs. So here we are, Genichiro, right? As soon as he does this attack, you want to get behind him immediately and starts like firing into him. Um, when he does some of his uh, like, when he's moving about, just keep pressing R1 because some of his attacks, you can just keep hitting him while he's moving and just get a bit more damage in him. Uh, when he does that flurry move, just like parry all of it. Again, You'll always end that flurry with like a poke or a, an unblockable slash as well. So you're looking to either make a counter or jump depending if he does the half spin or not. Because um, you'll do a half spin and then you'll get the unblockable if you're meant to jump it. And... Um, if you just get the unblockable without him doing a half spin, he's going to use a thrust, so Makiri can't rip. Like this. Yeah. But you should... Like, by the time that I beat Ishin, I was flawlessing Ginichiro. Yeah. Like, yeah. perfect deflect the entire first stage, because I was stuck on Ishin for so long. But so, here we, so there we go. There. There's, there's the three-hit combo, charged R1, dodge to the right, whirlwind slash. That is the, the basic, like loop that you're trying to get Ishin into. Oh, there's a Makiri counter opportunity as well. Uh, there is, because sometimes he'll like, go at, like, he'll fall, so there you go. Um, he done the, uh, into the sheath attack, that's when you jump on his head, get in some hits on the way down. And whenever he does that slow attack, uh, any one of his slow three or four hit combos, you just follow up with a charged R1, he will always block it, and that's when you can get around it, because that block, he, his AI then forces him into using, like, Kind of like a, a, a bigger wind-up move, and that gives you the chance to use the whirlwind, sli uh, whirlwind slash. But you are just going to have to, like, recognize some of the tells for his attacks. Like, yeah. the unblockables in particular are ones that you're just going to have to eventually recognize. Um, some of his other combos I would maybe try and get used to as well, like his, his uh, four or five hit combos. So, just to make a point... Um, Sometimes, so he'll take like a step back. Um, he didn't do it quite there, but so if right, he so, straightens up, he's going to thrust. So there we go. Um, so after that charge attack, it just goes. He'll then do like either he'll take a step back. There's so many things that he'll then go into, and it's you. You will just have to learn and kind of feel like is he going to be using an attack that is like something that I can capitalize on? Because sometimes he will go into that attack where he just does this really quick forward thrust that you can Makiri counter, but it's so fast and so, so difficult to actually capitalize on. But specifically, if he takes the step back, that is a particularly good one to capitalize on. Yeah, he tends to finish a lot of his complete combos with sword arts of some kind as well. So he'll use like an Ash and a Cross, or he'll yeah. fire at one of the attacks that sends like, a shockwave at you or something like that. But if you can deflect and uh, if you dodge part of the combo he most of the time won't finish it that way and you save yourself a bit of so you saw it just there you've done the three hit combo i've done a charged r1 and then after that you blocked it and took a step back 
Now with there, uh, the same thing, but he went into the, like, the, the slow thrust, not the fast one. And that's his whirlwind slash, it's bigger than yours. Yeah. A lot bigger than yours. Three hit combo, a, like attack, takes the step back. And then we capitalize, we dodge around to the left, and then use whirlwind slash. Now that's the attack that is, sp for me, uh, the, the tell is very difficult. You're probably going to have um, a, an issue with that attack as well. But as long as that you're, you're doing this the way we're doing, even if you are getting caught in that attack, it shouldn't matter because you're doing everything else correctly. And there you go, that is phase one. I think that is a good enough explanation for phase, for phase one. Phase one is slow, that's the thing. Don't get greedy, just take phase one as it is and accept that it's a slow phase, but once you get it out of the way, the next two phases, easy peasy. So it's fucking game on now. Axe does, out. Does blocking Genichiro's bullets? Not Genichiro. Ishin. Yeah. Uh, let me guess, uh, fill his poise? I'm not sure. Imagine if it does. I imagine it doesn't. Like, deflecting bullets would somehow stagger him. That'd be hilarious. Imagine you got the visceral range on him because he <laughs> deflected one of his bullets, you're just like, I've been parried. <laughs> so, as you saw there, the axe, only 12 emblems, managed to take him out. So, phase three is absolutely just spam the axe like fuck on him, and that is going to serve you well. And now, you've got six heals, as well as all your other healing items, all your other buffing items, and then you've got mortal draw, plus some emblems. If you can get that third phase, if you can get a lucky good third phase, the fourth phase, the fourth phase is even easier. You also don't have to put any of these items on your hotbar because you can just pause the game and consume them from your inventory. This is true. I just and, like to make yeah. sure that I'm like... It just saves you fumbling like the D-pad trying to find the items. So there's the attack that you want to bait out, that big forward lunge straight into the mortal draw, bang, look at that, look how much damage that is, it's like what, an eighth? That's pretty good. Definitely write home to mama about that one. <laughs> Your mortal draw is definitely bigger than Genichiro's. You think? There we go, bait it out, dodge to the left, mortal draw, easy peasy, easy peasy. Isn't there like an empowered version of the mortal draw that you can get? Uh, so, yeah, yeah, I guess there is, that's on the la the final skill tree. Yeah. There we go, third time again. But the thing is, is mortal draw is so good that ultimately you really just don't need it. Yeah, even when even when you don't use any emblems, <clears throat> mortal draw is still one of the best, like... Now, ultimately though, um, chances are on your new game plus playthroughs or whatever, the upgraded version of mortal draw will probably be really, really good. Now, I got caught there on the lightning attack, it is what it is. But now, you know, this is the kind of time, damn right, take the bundle Jesus statue, get another revive. Get it. I mean, as you can see, this is so easy, like, baiting out that attack and just using mortal draw is crazy good. Okay, deflecting his bullets does not build his posture. Okay, yeah, we'll, we'll, <laughs> we've established you that. You blocked then. like four or five in a row and I was expecting his posture to just be like, -da 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 -da, like when you block Genichiro's fucking uh, flurry. Yeah. But no. Also, why the fuck does Ishin have a gat? Why not? What is that about? How does Ishin have a revolver? Sounds like jealousy if you ask me. I mean, I am, but <laughs> it's so fucking strange. Like, see, when he pulled that out, I'm like, what the fuck? I can sort of understand the halberd. But what the hell is with the revolver? What, what part of Imperial D Japan does, like, a six shooter come for? <laughs> well, this, this is why he's so good. Everybody else has got a sword and he's brought a gun. Uh, that, m imagine that was it. Uh, the greatest warrior who ever lived. Never swordsman, just warrior. Why? Because he's got a gun. Ah, he's just snake. Ishin the there sword snake, more like. Dodge to the left. Mortal draw. And you just repeat that and just hope to not get caught in any attack strings and die immediately. And if you do, just do it again. Eventually you'll be. Yeah, exactly. And you have so much, like, auxiliary healing items at this point that you've got basically infinite time in order to like do this phase and yeah it can it can be like very tense especially if you've tried an amount of goes at this but this is definitely the easiest you're gonna like all the other like techniques i've tried to, to do this it just just fucking nail phase one and all the phase two rather and all the other phases it just doesn't matter phase phase two is like the defining phase of a run on um Ishin. And uh, one more jump, and that should be him dead. Staying round about mid-range to him is like 
the, the ideal distance. And you can see he follows up some amount on that attack as well. Like, the amount of distance he can cover is just crazy. But even at that, none of his attack strings seem to be anywhere near, or not anywhere near, but like, not as powerful as like, Owl's most powerful attack string. That thing will just one-shot you and it's hard to dodge. No, he should be doing it. There we go. Last mortal drop. And that is Ishin done. Hopefully the, the double boss footage can just kind of like solidifies the strategies that we're talking about. That you're talking about. I beat him legitimately. Right, okay, Wh whatever. <laughs> this, this fucking cuck beating him legitimately. Hey, look, I paid 60 bucks. I'll fucking play the game how I like. <laughs> And I'll look down on anyone who doesn't play it my way, regardless of that statement. So now, we're going to show you a technique where you don't have to play the game four times to get three ending trophies. And this works on PS4 and PC. Not sure if there is a function for Xbox, and I can't explain it or give you footage for it. But essentially, if you're playing PS4... Nobody on Xbox is playing Sekiro, they're playing it on PC or PlayStation. At this stage, what you want to do is take your um, Sekiro save file like data and you can see it is in uh, your documents app data roaming Wh whichever Sekiro. drive your game is installed in your app data so before like at this point after defeating Ishin like quit out find that and copy the file to your desktop so then uh, once you have done that load back into the game and then select the ending that you want to do. Get your credits, get your trophy, complete the game, and then the file you just copied to your desktop. You then copy it back in to the save file. That is now your base file for replaying this part of the game to get each ending. You just reload the game, pick a different choice. So now I should probably show you so there we go, like, we don't start a new playthrough, we've done it, done through the credits, quit out, and then that is us back to the desktop. And I should probably have footage of going into Steam and showing you getting the uh, achievement. Um, oh yeah, you probably, if you're on PC anyway... You so that was me, I just showed you the playtime after, and now once I load the file back in it'll show you the like slightly reduced playtime again. So back into Sekiro, and then we just want to delete this, and then copy that back in. And that is how you backup saves on PC as well, I guess. Yeah, I guess so. So now, um, now I think I show you the Steam footage. Yeah, there we go. So now this is Steam, and the uh, Immortal Severance, there we go. That is the trophy we got for just doing the, like, the top... On, out of the three options, the top one. And there are seven more trophies to go. Which so, are the other ending-related trophies yeah. in the game and skill pages and maximum attack or maximum whatever. So here we go. Loading back in, you should see the footage of the, the slightly reduced playtime. This will put us back to where we were before choosing an ending. We went back in time. Literally. Like, this is so cheaty as well. Now, th this is how you do it on the PS4. Uh, you upload your save using the save upload function to like the PSN cloud at the exact same point and then you just re-download your data and you'll just be straight back as the exact same thing. So now taking the second end. I think PlayStation Plus has a one download per 24 hours. It does per not. Game limit. Is that I, I think now? they've got. I think they've gotten rid of it because I was able to do it like one after another. Uh, well, because I tried to do it for a game a long time ago and it told me to get fucked. I can only download once in a 24 hour period. Crazy. I, so that I think that was a while ago, but I think they've gotten okay. rid of it. Or it might just be for some games as well because a lot. Maybe this was a Dark Souls yeah. game. Uh, so, admittedly, like, Dark Souls and Bloodborne might have an issue with, like, downloading it multiple times. But there you go. We should now go and have six trophies left because we got the next ending trophy. And that was... We did not have to do a whole other playthrough. This is saving you fucking at least, if you're following the guide one for one, like, at least 18 hours of your life, this well, is I mean, saving you. A fast playthrough of the game. You could probably beat the game in, like, four or five hours. 
if you just wanted to blitz through it. Like, but if you're decent at the game, you've like, you've played a decent amount of it, like outside of just the first playthrough and stuff like that. Yeah. Yeah, you could probably slide through the game in like five or six hours and then just get the ending that you want. But doing it this way is just so much like, I guess you might have an issue with it if you find it kind of like cheaty, but I, I really don't. It's just backing up your save and saving yourself, yeah, 20 hours of fucking game time at least. If you're, you know, like kind of slow at the game, taking everything. No, I mean like four playthroughs, like five, six oh, hours sure, each sure. is yeah, about yeah. 20, 25 hours. So. so now you can platinum the game on minimum two playthroughs. Yeah, because you still need to get your lapis lazuli. Yeah. Also, it might it might be minimum. No, 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 two, two. two. So you just back up your save before Ishin on NG plus, and then continue the NG plus gameplay. So you just do this before fighting Owl the first time, and then once you uh, you don't fight Owl, you fight Ishin instead, and then you re-download your save once you've gotten that trophy, and then continue on your second playthrough, fighting Owl again, just doing everything one for one until you can finish all your Lazuli items. But I'll make a, another video for that. But as you can see, that is the three endings done. And then you can re-download your save again if you want. And you can tell this is in 60 FPS because it says so on the screen. Um, <laughs> yeah, I guess it does. <laughs> Gotta love NVIDIA. I'm not sure if that's... Because sometimes you put a video up here and it'll just come up 60 FPS and that's on our screen. They won't see that. Will they not? Yeah. Huh. Yeah, I know, I it's weird. I thought it was only a game overlay thing. Yeah, I know, right? I know, oh, right? Oh, well, no, it actually is an overlay on Vegas. Holy shit, why is that a thing? No idea. Why do we need to know what FPS the Vegas preview is going I don't even know how that fucking that works that way. How does it even know uh, what FPS the Vegas preview is? So anyway, guys, that is it for Sekiro the Ultimate Guide. Now, there is a couple more parts I need to do that I'll release once I've had a fucking break and put out some other different non-Sekiro-related videos. But ultimately, that is going to get you through the game and uh, hopefully this whole thing was enjoyable and informative to you. Thanks. Uh, admittedly, but I'm not gonna lie, just while we're here, it was me that done all the footage for it this time, but I guess Steven gets away with it considering you recorded all the footage for all the other four guys. Yeah, I've done my time. <laughs> you have done your time. And then some. I, I done most of the footage for the PvP videos as well, remember that? That Dark Souls 2 uh, nightmare. Nah, the Dark Souls 2 PvP videos are me. Aye, and then what about all the videos that never made it? Like what? I don't know, there was at least like 15 different fucking PvP builds that we were gonna do and I spent like 20 hours on each one fucking testing it out and playing it and most of them never made it to light, but whatever, who cares? Yeah, well, then, I'm not angry about it, it's Sekiro now! Then Bloodborne happened, right, get over it. Yeah, and then there was no such thing as PvP again until Dark Souls 3. God, that really stifled content. Yeah, so does FromSoft. Well, anyway guys, thanks for sticking with me through the guide. If you're still listening at this point, again, I can't thank you enough. It's just become a vodcast at this point, hasn't it? Yeah, it kind of has. Yeah. Right, we're going to let you get going, because we're not talking about anything. Thanks again, guys, and hopefully we'll see you in Demon Souls content. Remember, don't ever let a wolf in your cock house again. <laughs>